welcome back to Python scripting for GIS applications. This is a class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks in its spring semester 2013. And this week we're um, learning how to use Python in the ArcGIS field calculator. And from your last session, the assignment was to create a script that replaces anywhere there's an occurrence of a lowercase l with the number one, and any place there's the occurrence of O's with the numeric value zero. So if we right mouse click on our field, we're trying to correct. Basically, I made a little um, function called fix characters, and that's going to receive our input string. And then basically we'll use the dot replace function. So dot replace um, lowercase o with a zero, dot replace uppercase o with a zero, and dot replace lowercase l with a one. And then um, that will be stored in this variable new string. So basically the first time through search for lowercase o, and if you find it, replace it with a zero, then search for an uppercase O, and if you find any, replace them with zeros, and then finally search for a lowercase L, and if you find any, replace them with ones, and then return that new string back to this field. Okay, so what we need to do is have our call be to the correct function name. So one way to guarantee that is to copy and paste our function. So control C for copy and control V for paste and that way we won't make any spelling errors. And then we're going to pass our field to our function. So we need to correctly spell our field so one way to guarantee that would be to double click on the field from the list of fields. And then we would simply run this field calculator script. So then for this field it correctly replaces any occurrence of lowercase l's with the character 1 and any occurrence of o's with the character 0. And once again here was our script that did that. Okay, from last time, the second part of your assignment was to replace any uppercase March with, or any uppercase month, where it's just the first character's uppercase and then the other characters are lowercase. So, for example, for March, we want a capital M and then a lowercase a r c h. And that's very simple. If we go to the field calculator, What we would do is go to the string functions, and there's a function called dot title. So basically, what we want to do is grab this field string month. So I'll double click on string month, and then for that field, dot title, and then just OK. So that was a very quick way to fix any month in this field that did not begin with an uppercase. Okay, in this session I'm going to teach you some common Python string functions that are used for um, manipulating strings. So for example, let's say we've got a floating point value uh, representing some price. And what we want to do is create a string that has a dollar sign and it has the price up to um, two to the right of the decimal. So one way to do that would be to use the round function with your floating point variable. So that would round it to the two digits to the right of the decimal. So what we could do is change our floating point variable. And then we'll create a string variable from that. So string price is going to be equal to dollar sign 
plus floating point price converted to a string. So to convert a numeric value to a string, you use the str function. So now we've got a string, it starts with a dollar sign, and there's two digits to the right of the decimal place. Okay, let's assume that we start with a string and we want to basically have a dollar sign and then get rid of any uh, characters beyond two digits to the right of the decimal place. So here's our string variable. So what we could do is first find where the decimal place is located. And I'll put that in a variable called dot. So that's going to be equal to our string variable. And then dots, and there will be a function find. So we're going to find this character dot. Okay, so if we look at that, that returns the position of the decimal place. So this would be position 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So then we could make our new price variable equal to a dollar sign plus our string variable starting at position 0 and going to our dot position plus 3. So basically, go to the dot, include two characters, and up to the third character. So that's how you can do it if you start with a string. OK, another useful string function is the dot format function. So let's make a list of um, three string objects. And what we could do is we could make a message using the dot format function. So basically it's dot format, and then whatever is in these parentheses will appear wherever your curly braces are. So for example, we'll put inside these parentheses from our list, get the first element of the list. And then print message. So what happened was whatever wherever these curly braces are are substituted with whatever is in the parentheses following the dot format. So for example, if we go Alt P and let's print the next item on the list. So we could also do it in a loop. So for i in the range going from 0 to the length of our list, and control command. So print something is on the loose, and that something will be dot format and it'll be the ith item of our string list. So this is a handy function to dot format if you've got some variable that changes and the rest of your string is constant. So this is the constant part of our string. And then the first is what is variable in our string. So basically wherever the curly braces are located is where this is placed in the string. Okay, we could also strip away characters from a string. So for example, here we've got a string and it's got um, some spaces before name and some spaces after the name. So how many characters is that string? So we could use the length function. So it's 12 characters long. So basically we could get rid of all the 
characters to the right of our string. Um, so we'll say string value is equal to string value and then dot and there should be a function write strip. So dot and write strip. So we're going to write strip all the characters that are spaces. So if we look at our, it's stripped away all the characters to the right. And then, well, what's the length of our string now? So it's eight characters long. And likewise, we could use um, the dot left strip to get rid of any white space to the left. So then if we look at our string, it has no um, characters that are white space to the right and no characters that are white space to the left. Okay, and if you don't care about left or right and just want to get rid of all the white space characters, you can use the dot strip command. So dot strip. Okay, the opposite of stripping would be padding strings with characters. So, for example, let's make a string variable. And we want to pad that. So, let's say we want a 16-character string. And we want it left justified. Um, and we'll pad it with some characters. So typically, you pad it with spaces. But in this example, I'll pad it with dashes. Okay, so left justified 16 characters and fill it with dashes and you could do the same thing you could say well write justify so write justify 16 characters and dashes or you could store it in a new variable um, so we'll say string name is equal to our old string name and this time, instead of left justifying or right justifying, we'll center it. And we'll have a 16 character string and we'll center it using some characters. So you could do spaces. I'll do asterisk just so we can see it. So now if we look at our string name, it is centered and it's padded with asterisks. Okay, so we had to set it back to its original value because here it already had 16 characters. Okay, so now we'll do it with spaces and then we'll look at. So now it's centered and it's padded with spaces. Okay, sometimes you have a string and you want to extract uh, subsets from that string or basically partition it. So, for example, let's say we've got a string variable um, representing hectares and we want to split that and give us um, the digits to the left of the decimal place and the digits to the right of the decimal place. So, what we could do is make a new variable parts. And that's going to be equal to our string variable. And then dot, and there'll be a function called partition. So partition, you tell it what the separator is that you're looking for. So in this case, our separator is a decimal place. So that returns an object. So let's see what the type of the object is. So it's a tuple. So basically you can't change tuples, but they're analogous to a list that you can't change. Um, so then we could, for example, print out the first item in that tuple. So that would be, it was the separator was the decimal place. So that would be for the first item in the tuple. And then how many items are in that tuple?
so there's three items in the tuple. So let's see what our next item in the tuple is. So the decimal place. So dot partition, when it makes your parts, it includes the separator as part of your parts. Another function is the dot split, and it's different that it will return a list rather than a tuple, and it will not include the separator in the items in your list. So let's try that. So if we say um, dot split, dot split. So now what's the type of this object? So it's a list, and if we look at our list, we have just two items in the list. So basically it doesn't include the dot when it splits up that string. So this is index zero on our list, and this would be the index one on our list. Okay, your assignment for our next session would be, you've got a field that has string values, and what you want to do is, this is a 16 character field. You want to write a field calculator script that the, these values represent prices. So what we want to do is throw away anything after um, two digits to the right of the decimal, and then add a dollar sign at the beginning of every um, string value, and then pad it so it's right justified. So when we're done, um, we will have these right justified with a dollar sign at the start, and anything beyond the sense, these characters got stripped away. And I'll go over that field calculation at the beginning of our next video session.